Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,452. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, either the finished file or start file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have two tables, a transaction table with date, customer ID, and sales. And we have a customer table. And our goal is to calculate the maximum monthly customer total for the entire year. That means one single number either using an array formula or a pivot table. Now, what that means is from this transaction table, we have to calculate every single one of the monthly totals for every one of the customers. And then from this whole sea of numbers, calculate the one largest customer monthly total. All right, now we're going to see two ways. Let's go over to the start file. The pivot table method is the easiest and fastest. A couple clicks and we got it. However, sometimes you want a single cell formula, and you want the formula to automatically update if any numbers change. So we'll see that crazy array formula in just a second. Now, for the pivot table, all we need is this one table. So I'm going to click in a single cell, go up to Insert, over to Pivot Table, or I'm going to use the keyboard Alt and V. I'm going to put this pivot table on the existing sheet, let's say in H4, click OK. Now, since there are 12 months in our data set, we only have 2016, that means we'd have 12 months. We have 81 customers. So because customers is much taller, I'm going to bring that down to the rows. Instantly, we get a unique list of customers. Now I'm going to bring date down to columns and instantly because I'm using Excel 2016, it will group by months and date. I'm going to drag date off because I just want the months. Now I drag sales down to the values area. I'm going to right click the values area and number formatting, not format cells, but number formatting, something like currency, click OK. Now I have all the numbers for every single customer I have each one of their monthly sales, or for months they didn't buy. Now I'm simply going to come up here and use equals max. I need the max. I'm going to highlight all the way to December, all the way down there to customer 81. And then I'm going to use Shift Enter to put the formula in the cell and jump the cursor up. And there is our total. That by far is the easiest method. Now, if we're going to do this with a single cell array formula, I am going to need the start date for the year. And I'm going to need a unique list of the customer IDs. And I have those. But somehow, inside the formula, we need to create all these. That means we need this cross tabulated table inside our formula. So somehow, we have to build a vertical list of customer IDs. That one's easy. Then, notice January, February. But for an internal formula, since the formula is looking at individual dates, when we get to February, we're going to have to have an upper and lower date. We're going to have to say greater than or equal to February 1st and less than or equal to February 28th. That actually is going to be the hardest part of this formula. Now, I'm going to do this in a couple stages. Let's come up to the cell. I'm going to close the clipboard. Now, we're going to start with the sum ifs formula. Now, normally what we do is we give it a sum range, criteria range, and a single criteria. Now, we're going to look at that example first, and then we'll see how to leverage this criteria argument right here by putting multiple items in there and doing a function argument array operation to create this entire cross-tabulated table. Now, some range, we are going to have to use the sales. So I'm going to click in the top cell, Control-Shift-Down arrow to highlight all the way to the bottom, Control-Backspace to jump back to the active cell, comma. We're going to start off by, as our criteria range 1, highlighting the entire customer ID column, Control-Shift-Down arrow, Control-Backspace. Comma. Now, criteria one, normally we do something like this. I'm going to put a single condition. That instructs some ifs to look through here, find all of the ones. 
get all of the numbers associated with the number 1, close parentheses. And because there's a single item right there, some ifs will deliver a single answer. Now let's evaluate this to see what some ifs will deliver. I'm going to use the F9 key. Of course, it delivers the overall total for customer number one. Now Control Z. That's definitely not what we want. I'm going to double click A8. And for criteria one, we're going to give it every single customer ID. Now I'm going to click on the top cell, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace. What we're doing is we're putting more than one item into criteria one. That instructs some ifs to deliver a single answer for every single customer. Now what we did here, this is called a function argument array operation. We put in 81 customer IDs. Some ifs will spit out 81 answers. Now I'm going to click at the end and hit the F9 key. And there it is. These are the overall totals for every single customer. Now we want to notice something about what happens when we evaluate an array operation. It shows up in array syntax. Arrays are always housed in curly brackets. Those semicolons are because we gave it customer IDs in different rows. In array syntax, a semicolon means go down a row. In just a moment, we'll see that comma means go over a column in array syntax. Now, that's going to be important, but we're going to Control Z. Now, it is important because our cross tabulated table, that means that if we want this to deliver a rectangular range, the customer ID has to be vertical or a different ID in each row. And then the months are going to have to be in a single row, but really it's in different columns. Now, as I mentioned, the generating of all of the upper and lower limits for each one of the months is the hard part. So I'm just going to hit Enter for a second. That doesn't deliver what we want. I want to come over here and see if off to the side I can generate, or actually I'm going to do it over here. I want to see if I can generate an entire list of dates. Now I'm going to use the eDate function. Normally, we give the eDate a single date input, which is what we're going to do here, comma. And then we tell it how many months to go forward or backwards. Now, if I put 0 here, this is kind of silly. Close parentheses, if I hit F9, it won't show me the uh, it'll show me the serial number. But that's the actual serial number for this month. 0 means don't go forward any month. Stay in this month. And eDate delivers the same date in that month. If I say 1, if I evaluate this, this gives me the serial number for the beginning of next month. Now what I really want to do is put an array of months here. I want 0 to 11. That means go 0 months forward delivering 1, 1, 2016. Go one month forward to deliver 2, 1, 2016, all the way to 11 months forward, which would be 12, 1. So you ready? I'm going to delete for a second. Remember, arrays are housed in curly brackets. I want a 0 because I need the first of this month. And I'm using a comma, not a semicolon. Actually, let me do this, comma 1 close curly bracket. And if I were to F9, notice it delivers the serial number for January 1st and February 1st. But notice the comma, Control Z. What if I used a semicolon instead? Then the formula is instructed. Whoops, I did that two times in a row. The formula is instructed F9 to deliver the answers in different rows. Control Z. Now that's very important because in order to get the cross tabulated, you have to have one function argument array operation in rows and the other one in columns. So you ready? Backspace, comma. And now I'm going to put the entire set of numbers, comma 2, comma 3, comma 4. All right, so now if I come to the end in F9, those are all the serial numbers for the first of each month in 2016. Now what I really need, because this is the lower limit, 
I need to say in front of each one of these numbers, is the date from this column greater than or equal to each one of these lower limits? So Control-Z, I simply i am going to make another array operation. In double quotes, greater than or equal to, and double quotes, and join. Remember, EDATE is delivering a bunch of items. Now I'm doing an array operation where I'm saying join this to every one of the items there. If I come to the end and hit F9, there are our lower limits. These are going to be entered as a function argument array operation in some ifs. And then the criteria range will be the entire date column. Control Z. Now I'm going to copy this using Control CC. That copies it and opens up the clipboard. If your CC isn't turned on, you have to actually turn it on in options, and you open the clipboard up there. Now I have that in the clipboard, and now we need the end of the month. Well, now our input is the start of the month, but I can use the end of the month function on this start date, comma, and the same month principle holds for E date. So I say 0, close parentheses. Now in start date is the end of the month. It'll give me the end of all of the months for this year. I simply need to change the comparative operator to less than. Remember, these are the upper limits. So whatever date is going to be picked out over here in the transaction table has to be less than or equal to the upper limit. If I click at the end in F9, there are our upper limits. Control-Z, Control-C to load it up here. Now I'm going to click Escape. That's kind of dangerous because it's gone if I click Escape. But I have them up over here. Now F2, and I need to add two more ranges, comma, the criteria range. This is the date, Control-Shift-Down or Control-Backspace, comma, and the criteria 2. I'm going to click over here on the clipboard, and it inserts our function argument array operation. Remember, if I hit F9, these are separated by commas. So these will be as if they are column headers instructing some ifs to deliver this entire rectangular range. Each one of these lower limits will be matched up with each one of the customer IDs. Control-Z, now I come to the end. That's criteria 2, comma. Criteria range, I need to highlight date again. I'm going to cheat. Watch this. Criteria range 2, Control C. Click on, uh oh, it's not, oh, criteria range 3, Control V, comma. Criteria 3. Now I come over and get the one with the end of the month. You've got to be kidding me. I'm going to hit Enter just for a second because I got nervous. That's a big formula. I don't want to lose it, but F2. And now let's F9. And if you look through this entire thing, that's that entire rectangular range created with the pivot table. Control-Z. Now again, this is a crazy formula. Array formulas are kind of the upper echelon of difficulty in Excel. So for the vast majority of people, even myself when I'm in a hurry, I'm using the pivot table. But this will work. Now what do we have left to do? We simply need to wrap the max function around that. Now, number one, it's got a bunch of array operations. Come to the end, close parentheses. If I hit Enter, it's going to deliver the first number in whatever the first array it's seen, but that's not what we want. I want to go back, hit F2. We have to enter this with a special keystroke. There's a bunch of function argument array operations, which are not going to calculate correct unless we use the special keystroke Control Shift and Enter. Immediately, we look up to the formula bar to verify that the curly brackets are put in. When I do Control Shift Enter, that's me telling Excel, calculate this as an array formula. Those curly brackets are Excel saying it understood and calculated it as an array formula. Look at that. Now we can take this one level better. F2, I don't want to use Control Shift Enter. And the way you decide whether you need to use Control Shift Enter, it's all about function arguments. Now, I wrote a whole entire book called Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas. And there's only five functions that have arguments that can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter lookup function, sum product, chi square test, index function, and the aggregate function. 
Well, the aggregate function will work for us because it can do the max calculation. Now I'm going to backspace. Ready? A, G, there's aggregate, tab. Now it has one, two, three, four arguments. Function number, we think that we can use max. But the first 13 functions do not handle array operations. It's only 14 to 19. So I want large. So I'm going to double click 14, comma. By the way, if you're curious, I have a whole playlist at YouTube just on the hundreds of different uses for aggregate. It's also extensively covered in my Control-Shift-Enter book. Now, normally, when we're doing array operations, we have errors. But here, we have no errors whatsoever. So for options, I'm going to say ignore nothing, comma. Array, that's the entire array. And this is the trick. That argument, array argument, inside of aggregate is programmed to handle array operations without Control-Shift-Enter. This is one of five lucky functions. Now I can type comma and k. That's which large do you want? The first, second, third, fourth? Well, we want max, so we put one. Close parentheses. And now all I do is hit Enter or Control-Enter. And there it is. It calculates the correct max monthly customer total. So we can accomplish this goal quick and easy. Pivot table, unique list of IDs, group by month, drag the sum in there, and simply use max. Or we can have a little creative fun with a crazy array formula. All right, if you like this video, comment below, click that thumbs up, and sub. For more videos to come, we'll see you next video.